to learn the good, the bad, and the reality of the off-grid lifestyle, click subscribe so you don't miss anything. Hit the bell notification. Now I've been working about 10 minutes a day with my sickle bar blade, cutting this grass down so I can get a sort of push more through it. I'm, I've made a lot of progress. I'm very proud of myself. I know it seems silly that I'm proud of myself that I've knocked all these weeds down, but I'm really out of shape. But there's a sense of pride about what I'm doing. In a couple more days, I'll probably have it all finished. You know, I just got this little bit over here to do. The other day I made a video and I was showing you everything we got done. You know, we got the camper set up. We got the solar panels completed, hooked up and they're producing electricity. Got the well pump installed. Got the IBC tank hooked up and we got water pumping from our IBC tank to the to the camper and the well is pumping water from the well to the IBC tank. Generator is only happening to work. On cloudy days like this, it works about two to three hours a day. On sunny days, I don't even have to run it. Or even partially sunny days, I don't have to run it. Cloudy days like this, you know, we're making enough power to get us through the day, but I top the batteries off at night with the generator so we can get through the night. Now that may change a little bit in the summertime because right now the refrigerator is outside underneath that tarp and so it doesn't run very much. But my thinking is, is in the summertime, the days are longer so we'll get more sunlight so I won't, still won't have to run the generator very often. In the end, I may have to get maybe four more panels. I'm in no hurry to do that. And then we have started cleaning up the trailer. That is important because that's where we're gonna build our tiny house. That's where our permanent home is gonna be. And we've made quite a bit of progress on everything we've done. You know, like I said, we, I go down and cut that field about 10 minutes a day. It's important that I get these weeds knocked down as much as possible before the summer hits. Because as I stated in other videos, I'm worried about copperheads. I remember one year I was helping bale hay in a field. and. There were so many copperheads in that field. The tractor would pick them up as we were baling. The baler would pick it up. And so you see snakes flapping around inside the bale. Hey, they were everywhere. So I made a video the other day and people were talking about how much work this is gonna be. And they, I felt like they were questioning whether it was worth all the effort. And I thought I would make a video today to talk to you about trying to inspire you to do what you dream of doing. And don't let anybody talk you out of it. I'm not a big inspirational speaker. It's not my intent. I just try to show you what I'm doing, how I feel about things. And right now I'm feeling pretty good. For the last three years, Carolyn and I have done the nomadic lifestyle. We've traveled the country from the east to the west. And in the end, there was not very much pleasure out of it. What I will say the nomadic lifestyle did for me was it taught me that there was something different than killing myself at work. But that was about it. It was a constant struggle being a nomad. And it pushed us into doing the off-grid living lifestyle. We had sold everything that we owned. So the only thing we had fit in that little box. Of course, we had the pop-up camper fire. That's where we started our nomadic lifestyle with. And so we basically had to start over. So not only did we sell everything we owned, most everything we owned got burned up also. Getting back to the amount of work that this lifestyle takes, it's, it's been absolutely rewarding to me. The progress that we've made just in the last two weeks, uh, coming up on Tuesday, this is Sunday, coming up on Tuesday, we'll be here two weeks. In the first week, we got everything going so we could be off grid. And then, of course, it got cold and rainy and wet, so we've slowed down quite a bit. But I still force myself to go out and do things and enjoy the, my new life right here. This is just perfect. I rented eight acres prior to doing the nomadic lifestyle. It was very cheap. We only had to pay $350 a month on the eight acres. I enjoyed those eight acres so much. But I would have never been able to just get off grid because I still had people I had to, to report to, the landlord and whoever else. They're not going to let you live off grid if you're renting. But here I own an acre and a half and I feel like I have more freedom here 
than I did at the eight acres. There is a lot of work, I agree. But if I don't kill myself doing it, it's well worth it. And you get to see the progress. There's some more trash I've showed you in the past. In my, in my creek, look at this. It's not flowing near as fast as it was yesterday. But this is my creek. And I get to come down and listen to the water trickle by. And I will get this cleaned up. Again, not pushing myself very hard. When I was cutting the grass, I only spent about 10 minutes a day doing that. And when then I go up work on the trailer when it's warmer, it's just way too cold and muddy right now. I spent about three hours a day. I'm not killing myself. And by doing the three hours a day, I'm making huge progress. I would say within the next couple months, that place will be spotless up there. At least that's my goal. I wanted to show you that you can do things. When I told everybody back in August, think about this, back in August, I told everybody I wanted to live the off-grid lifestyle. And the original plan was we were gonna do it in the next four years. The problem was, is we knew things were shutting down in the nomadic lifestyle. Campgrounds were being shut down. People were tearing up the national forests, national parks. I went through it over and over again. And I was just afraid that eventually there would be no place to park. Well, look here. Right now, there's a big virus outbreak pandemic going on. And they're shutting down camping at state parks. And then I've heard reports that they're going to shut down national force to camping also. But that, that means that you are confined to somebody telling you what to do. So when I mentioned back in August that we were going to do the off-grid lifestyle, Oh, you can't do that, Rob. You can't do that. There's so many rules and regulations. You can't collect rainwater. You can't live off grid. You're going to have to have power hookups. They're going to make you have a toilet. And just on and on and on and on and on and on about what I couldn't do. And here I am doing everything that I'm supposedly not able to do. And it didn't take long to figure this out. And I've documented everything that you need to do in order to do this. You got to research. I mean, it takes a lot of research. I spent hours on the computer trying to figure out what state was best to, to do the off-grid living lifestyle. And I concluded that Missouri was the best. They encourage being off-grid. Uh, Tennessee probably comes in a close second. And then it just kind of falls in line from there. I think Arizona and Texas and so forth and so on, but uh, you got to do your research. It is such a rewarding feeling, being free from everything. Just two weeks in. Look at this. This is my deadfall tree. If I'm not careful, something's going to fall on me. That's going to be my firewood for the, the winter. Off grid. It's mine. I just can't tell you how exciting this is. And I'm not spending a lot of money. Now, here's the thing. I know that there are a lot of people who are wanting to do the off-grid lifestyle, but something is causing them to run into a roadblock. And my suspicions are, is money. Now, as I said, this is only an acre and a half. Would I like to have 40 acres? Yeah, I would like to have 40 acres. But that's not realistic. It's just not realistic for me to ever own 40 acres without going into debt. I probably would never get it paid for in my lifetime. And then if something happens, you know, right now the economy is kind of questionable with this virus going around. Well, you know, what's going to happen? Am I going to be able to make enough money to pay for 40 acres? No, probably not. But for an acre and a half, I got it for $4,200 and it has a well that all I had to do was put a pump into. So here's what's phenomenal is Carolyn and I are living on our property, paid for, got it all set up for $7,000. So $4,200 for the property, a few hundred dollars for solar panels, had to get you know an inverter and a well pump, and we had to get all the supplies for the well. And then we had to get an IBC tank and a charge controller for our solar panels. And here we are living off grid. Can you do your dream that quickly? And the answer is yes, you can. You just gotta be determined to do it. And I think a lot of people have a dream, but I think what happens is, is they end up overextending themselves in their dream. 
the 40 acres. But can you do it on less? Yeah, we can. We did it on an acre and a half. If you are seriously considering doing something life changing, where you don't have to go to work and kill yourself every day. Don't get me wrong, you have to work. I work every day. It's just been so rewarding. And I really wanna encourage you to find a method that you can cheaply go live your dream and be happy. Thanks for watching.